Now the next thing that we're going to look at, the next item in the, in the cash flows from assets is called net capital spending. And net capital spending is simply the investment in fixed assets. So what we want to do is look at, did we make any fixed asset investment in the project? And where did we do it? Let me re rewrite my timeline up here. Did I make any fixed asset investment? And all we see is that we made an initial equipment, equipment is fixed assets, investment of 1.25 million. So when we see initial, that means it's happening in year zero. 1,250,000. This is a spending account again, so I'm writing that as a positive value. I have no further information about additional spending in fixed assets, but I could. I mean, you could conceive of a, of a, of a project where we have increasing sales, and because we have increasing sales, eventually we hit a point where we can't produce the number of units that we need with the equipment that we have, so we've got to buy more equipment and increase our net capital spending over time. But I don't, in this project, I have no additional spending here. So all that I have left, similarly to networking capital, is that I am able to re recoup some of my spending on fixed assets, and I'm able to do that through my after-tax salvage. In other words, I am able to sell my asset at the end of the useful life of the asset for some value and we're gonna to have to calculate what that is. So after-tax salvage, we know that after-tax salvage is equal to the sales price, the actual sales price, actual salvage, minus the tax rate that the firm pays, times the difference between sales price, what we actually get, and what we had it listed on our books at, or the final book value. So we know a few of things, we know a couple of those already. We're told in the problem that we can sell the asset for $625,000. Or rather, we do sell it for exactly what we thought we were gonna get. Tax rate is 34%, 625,000 sales price, minus the final book value, which we need to calculate. Now remember that final book value is equal to the cost basis of the asset, minus the accumulated depreciation. And we have not fully depreciated this asset, because we only have a four year life, but we used a seven year depreciation schedule. So we're definitely gonna have some book value, some value of this asset in the books, we wanna know what. So start with our cost basis, that's 1.25 million. What did we spend on the asset? Subtract the depreciation in every year. So in year one, it was 178,625. In year two, 306,125. In year three, 218,625. In year four, 156,125. That's all my years of depreciation. I subtract all that. I get a final book value of 390,500. So that's my final book value. I can plug that back into my asset. My formula for after-tax salvage, 625,000 minus the tax rate times sales price 625 minus final book value 390,500. So what this means is I had it on my books valued for less than what I have it here, what I actually sell it for. Because of that, it means I depreciated the asset too much and I means I paid less taxes to the government than I actually needed to pay. Remember, depreciation is a tax shield. It reduces the amount of taxes that you pay because it reduces your EBIT. So I owe taxes on the value of the sale, on the difference here, and that means what I actually walk away with is less. It's the sales price minus the additional taxes that I owe. So my after-tax salvage value is $545,270.
and I can plug that in here, 545 to 70. So what remains is to calculate free cash flow, or a cash flow from assets rather, which is operating cash flow, minus change in networking capital, minus net capital spending, and then take the net present value based on those cash flows from assets. So the last thing that we've got to do is calculate cash flows from assets. And cash flows from assets is equal to operating cash flow minus the change in networking capital minus net capital spending. And so we've calculated those here. All that remains is for us to do the algebra cash flows from assets, and here's our timeline again, zero, year one, year two, year three, year four. Operating cash flow, minus the change in working networking capital, minus net capital spending, where in year, z in year, in year zero, there's zero operating cash flow. The change in networking capital is 1,150,000, and net capital spending is 1,250,000. So zero minus one million one hundred and fifty thousand minus one million two hundred and fifty thousand gives me a cash flow from asset of negative two million four hundred thousand. And this is what we expect. Our year zero cash flow should be a big negative investment. And then in the next uh, in the during the rest of the project's life, we have the following cash flows from assets, and we're following the same procedure: operating cash flow minus the change in networking capital minus net capital spending. So in year one, we have operating cash flow of two million one hundred thirty-nine thousand seven hundred thirty-two minus a change in networking capital of three hundred fifty thousand minus zero net capital spending gives us a total cash flow from assets of 1,789,732. In year two, our operating cash flow is 2,183,082. We have zero change in networking capital and zero net capital spending, and so our cash flow from asset is simply equal to our operating cash flow here, 2,183,082. The same thing happens in year three. We have no uh, change in networking capital and we have no net capital spending. So our cash flow from asset is simply our operating cash flow, 2,153,332. Now year four, we have a lot going on. We've got our operating cash flow, 2,132,082. We have a negative change in networking capital. Right? Notice that this is, remember this is negative spending. So we have a negative minus the negative change of one and a half million dollars. And likewise, we have a negative change in capital spending. This is negative spending. We sold that asset. So minus negative 545,270. So we're going to add these two to operating cash flow, and we should get 4,177,352. And those are our five cash flows from assets. So this is step one, what's the cash flows from assets? Can we estimate them? And then step two is, do we take the project? And here we simply need to enter these cash flows exactly as they are into our calculator and solve for net present value and solve for internal rate of return. When we solve for the net, in the net present value, 
and we have a required rate of return equal to 28% that's given in the problem. So when we solve for net present value, we get a net present value of $2,913,649.23. So based on an MPV rule, we take the project, this is greater than zero. Internal rate of return, we solve for the IRR and we get 81.27%. And based on the IRR rule, this is greater than the required return. So again, we take the project.